location, as you can tell, than our typical tech setup that I'm usually in. And that is because I am actually in California right now on a little health spa retreat, which has been going amazing, but it's been a lot of working out. So I kind of use this as an excuse to sneak out for 10 minutes. I'm just kidding. But a lot of you have been asking to rebuild this here, which is the Harry Potter invisible cloak, which is so cool. By the way, I love Harry Potter. I watched different movies uh, growing up of Harry Potter. I am by no means an expert, but I love the movies. And for some reason I was scrolling through I think social media and came up about this Harry Potter invisible cloak. And I thought this is a fun project to build with Python and computer vision. So OpenCV is what we are going to be using for computer vision in this video. I'm so excited to walk you through this code. I also will link it down below so you can tinker around with it, build your own version. I mean, I feel like what we've built here with this code is just the tip of the iceberg. I think there are so many really interesting things that we can kind of add on for this. I'm curious to hear what should we add on? Should we make this a series? Should we build together? Leave in the comments because I feel like we're onto something here. All right, enough of me talking. Let's jump into the code. I'm going to walk you through it. And then as I mentioned, link it down below. It's really important though to go through it to understand what the code is doing. So then when you clone it and start building on top of it, you already know what the base looks like. All right, let's get into, I don't know why I'm saying, let, let's get into it. Okay, you can see here I have the project up on screen and these are the packages that we are going to be using. So CV2, which is also open CV. And that will really uh, allow us to build with computer vision. We have time and we also have uh, MP, which is NumPy. I used to, I pronounced it NumP one time. The internet went wild. It was, it was a dark place for me then. Anyways, so you can see it's what happens when you learn in public. I'm telling you, I'm learning in public for you to help you learn with me. And sometimes things go sideways. You can see here, the first thing we are going to do starting on line five is create the background. So I really want to emphasize in this example, it is not live detecting what my background is. We do have to create a background first. And this, if you wanted to take the project to the next level would probably be to make it detect a live background. So this is pretty simple. Essentially what it is doing is taking a photo for lack of better terms. So when it is, when this program is run uh, initially, you'll have to step out of the frame so it can take a background of everything behind you. But what this will do is it will give us the base to work with. So you can see here, this is a simple create background uh, and we're going through the num frames. It's pretty simple, this portion. You can also see we are doing it by time. If there is a background, it will return the background, otherwise could not capture any frames. Now, I don't really know what is going on with my phone and computer, but just as a side note, when you are testing this out, if your phone is connected to your computer, sometimes when you run this script, it will try and connect to your phone. So just something to be mindful of. I put my phone on airplane mode while I'm running this just to test it out for now anyways, till I resolve that issue. I'm pretty sure it's a very simple fix, but till we do it, this is what we get. So anyways, right here, we are creating the original background. So you can pause the video if you are coding along and go through this. It's super simple, checking for a background and it's as simple as that. Now this is really done using the NumPy package. Num yeah, pronounce right. See, this is what happens. And it's uh, just capturing it. Then we go down. Now these two next functions I used Claude for. I'm not gonna lie. Claude is there. It is there to help us out. We are going to use it. So this is creating the mask and applying the coat cloak, I should say, effect. Now, why I used Claude for these two is because it kind of got a little bit more into, it was kind of getting a little bit past my head if I'm being totally honest, honest with you. I'd never done this before with creating a mask and then also applying cloak effect. So you know what I'm gonna do because Claude created these two, let me copy them and I'm going to go to Claude. Give me a sec here. Explain to me this code. Okay. And we'll let the creator, which is not me for these two functions, explain it. All right, so you can see here for create mask, wait till it finishes. Come on. There we go. Perfect. For create mask. So it will create a binary mask to identify specific color range in the image. So it will convert the image frame, the input of the frame uh, into a BGR color space. Then it will use the mask, which is CV 
uh, from the CV2 package, open CV package, which will keep only the pixels within the speci specific color range, which is really interesting. So anything that is not the color, in this case when we were making this, I used blue as the color that would make everything invisible. And then we are going into apply cloak function. So that's exactly what it is. You know, this magical things just appear. This is where the invisibility cloak really comes in. So what it will do, this is pretty cool. Using bitwise underscore not, it will create an inverse of the mask. So everything you that is that color, that is identified as that color will be inverted. So you'll see that background image we initially took a photo of, which is pretty cool. So it's very simple when you think about it. It's just using, it's really just leaning on the CV2 package to really help you build with computer vision. And you can get very complicated with computer vision very quickly, but as someone like myself who's still really learning about it and just tinkering around with it, it's a fun way to take that first step. So I highly encourage you, whether you're a coder or just looking to build some really fun projects, to play around with it. All right, thank you, Claude, for your help. Let's go back to the code here. Right, then we are getting into our main function. And this is pretty straight or straightforward. When this function is called, the first thing it will do is open the camera. And as I mentioned earlier, make sure your phone is not attached to your computer. And then we're just doing here, if there is an error, could not open camera. And this took a lot of trial and error for me. It depends, I think, a lot on what version your computer is running on. I am on uh, Mac OS. I'll have to check my version. Let's check it right now. About this Mac. Mac OS Sonoma 14.5. I think I need it updated again actually, but it really does depend a lot on the version I find. So make sure if you are having some errors, you either Google it, go to your trusty Claude, like I mentioned, and uh, resolve it that way. Then we will first try by capturing the background. So this is that function above the, that we first went over where we were taking a photo essentially or creating the background uh, that we have. Then you can see here, these. this will change right now. As I mentioned, we are focusing on the color blue for the invisibility part of it. But say you were doing red, pink, whatever color, this is where you would input the color code. So for blue, I picked these two different colors of blues, a bit of a range, so then if you use a lighter blue or a darker blue, it will still pick it up. But um, I noticed with this one, when I first started it, I was wearing gray and it would pick up the gray as well. So you can totally modify these two based on the color you want for your invisible cloak. I feel like this would be such a good way to get, I mean, us as adults love it too, but even a kid into coding, if you have kids or know someone who does, because they're like, it's like magic it feels like almost. Then I had here starting main loop because sometimes it will take a little bit of time. So actually letting, the viewer know or the user know that it's starting is really helpful. And then we are going here, we are reading it, and then we are creating the mask and applying the cloak effect. It's really simple. I wasn't lying when I said it was very simple. And uh, calling these two functions we went through at the top. And then we're calling the main function. So it's extremely simple. And honestly, this was a really fun project to do. It didn't take that long. And as I mentioned, for some of these, especially these two, I used the help of Claude to really, I mean, like it just got very complex very fast. And I think that's okay. It's okay to use the help of AI when you are building something really fun that you just want to spend maybe an afternoon on or a weekend on. You're still using your own creativity, your own brain and logic to build the skeleton of the code. And if there are missing holes, Usually at that point, I would give up on my side projects. I'd be like, okay, well, I can't figure it out. There's nothing on Stack Overflow, but now I can just use Claude to kind of help me. So don't think there's any shame in it or anything like that. It's, it's a really fun thing to do. All right, and then, of course, as you know, when we run it, this is what happens. Let's try running it right now. My Wi-Fi isn't great, but let's see if it works. One sec here, let me, give me a sec here. Okay, I took a second because I need to find something that's kind of blue. I found a purse, I think, I mean, it's kind of green. It might be a little bit off in the colors I selected, but we are building and testing in real time. That's how we operate here. All right, so let's go run Python in terminal. Come on, the trickiest part is getting the camera. Let's wait, let's wait, make sure it's not going on my phone. Phone's on airplane mode. The Wi-Fi here is really slow, so we will see if it loads. Come on. 
okay, you know what? The internet, it's not, it's not having it here. It's telling me I need to go do another workout class or, or uh, relax, I guess, because I'm on vacation. But you can see here in this video, once again, this is the final output, which is really cool. I promise you this code is super simple as we went through and it's a lot of fun. So I'm curious to hear two things. One, do you wanna see more of these kind of projects built together in real time and just figuring it out as we go? As I mentioned, I'm not trying, I don't wanna create some false reality where it's these perfect tutorials and I got it in the first try and everything works great because that's not life, that's not reality even when you are a developer, building with code, even if you're not a developer. I'm just wanting to build some fun stuff. It's, we learn through trial and error and that's what we are here to do together. So if there are any other projects that you want me to make, let me know in the comments. I have another one I just did and this one I'll put up on screen here what it was. It was uh, using the same package, OpenCV and Python, but we were detecting, we tested what sunglasses frame looked best on my face shape. That was really fun. So maybe that is the next one we do. Leave in the comments, is that what we should do next? You can do so many things. Like that could be the start of building an application for uh, a wardrobe application, which you could do that, that'd be really fun. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech coding, future tech, AI, all the good stuff. And leave in the comments any questions, feedback, thoughts you have. I will do my best to answer every single one of them. Truly, I will. All right, bye everyone.